We are today at the Fun Forum uh, with Marvin. Thanks a lot for taking a bit of time sharing with us um, some great insight from your speech. You, you basically tried to tell us a bit more about what you see as a new global order. Can you tell us a bit more about where you see the evolution? Because I, as I understand, you still have the old, sorry, old countries, I would say, and now the new world, and a lot of expectations for the new world. But we still don't know where the shifts of, uh, especially politi political power, where it's going to be. There's a lot of talks about China. Tell us a bit more where you see that game for the moment. Well, that's for sure, is that there's expectations that, for example, China mm -hmm. will become the new global powerhouse. And my own sense is that there are so many impediments operating in China okay. that it will be a very long time before it gets there. So for the time being, it's going to be the present powerful countries okay. that remain powerful. All right. Because you, you mentioned something interesting. You said that 40% of the smart guys in China, most of them leave to the US, I would say, preferred area. So it's interesting to see that despite the maybe economic power that China has and will have, and the size as well, to maybe give them a chance to dominate the right. world, despite that, the brain is more in the US in all countries. It's a very sad story because the most successful people in China are the ones who really most want to leave. And so how can that country continue Built. to flourish if smart people go? We teach at the University of Chicago yep. large numbers of young Chinese, Chinese men and yeah. women at the business school. They all want to stay in the United States. And, and I remember also there were some concerns that at some stage the numbers of students in the U.S. would be largely from Chinese. And what will be the next generation of the U.S. politicians? The next Maybe. generation? Yeah. Chinese. Chinese. I tell so. you something, the next generation has already begun to be Indians. Amazing. Huge number of students come from India, stay in the United States. So, for example, the governor of Louisiana in the United States is now in India. Wow. And they are rapidly rising up. Definitely. Well, that's, that's interesting. Now, a lot have been said about politics, but we are here at Fun Forum, and all these guys, basically their business is about investing or making the investors investing. So there's a lot of question mark with where to invest. Where is the next Eldorado? Uh, what can bring additional returns? A lot have been said between yesterday and today about one, globalization, and second, uh, investors looking to diversify the investments into emerging markets. So when I'm listening to the CEOs of these big asset mutual funds uh, firms, and I'm listening to some investors, I'm, I'm a bit concerned because it sounds that uh, they're moving towards you know, more risky assets, especially investments in, uh, in emerging markets. You have a strong view there. Can you tell us a bit more well, about I it? Well, I do have a strong view, which is that I expect the emerging markets to grow more rapidly okay. than the developed countries. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, as you've implied, that a hugely greater amount of risk is being taken on by investing in emerging markets. And when the World Bank now has a new index, which they rank countries in the yep. world on the basis of their governance, okay. which includes things like corruption and the effectiveness of the government, the rule of law, and the emerging markets tend to be very low on those qualities, which are the very qualities that reduce risk. Okay. So it is no question that for the expected higher returns, returns huge amount greater risk. risk is being taken. Or you have really to clearly identify the risk and make sure that is well addressed at the right level. Right, and that can be done. Okay. Um, you also talked about the Middle East, a lot of things going on politically, very interesting. Um, still the rich guys there, actually, uh, but as you say, receiving checks rather than producing right, something. Um, how do you see between, I would say, the old countries, where do you see Middle East? On the new order, in the news, on the, on the uh, new economies, where do you see uh, them standing? The bad news is that any country that gets free money is not likely to be a successful country. Mm -hmm. Because 
the basic idea would be, why should I work for a living yeah. when I can get in on the oil money? So the countries that have a better chance of succeeding, and if we may put it in the Middle East, for example, Turkey is an example. Okay. Turkey, very successful country without any oil revenue. The countries without the revenues are more likely to succeed. So the great hope has always been Egypt. Okay. Because Egypt doesn't have those revenues, but under the stultifying dictatorship of Mubarak, Mubarak yeah. never got anywhere. And the question is now, will they have a different stultifying dictatorship? Or they really are going to open that economy to people, society, and politics? Well, as you can see, there's still a, a lot of questions, and we could really spend the whole day with Marvin just questioning where the opportunities will be. Um, thanks again for your time. Thanks, really appreciate it. Thank you.